situation, local narratives, and most important of all, participatory, democratic, and representing all shades of opinion. First of all, let me welcome Nishikan Singh Sapam, MLA from Manipur. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Kim Gangte, former MP Lok Sabha. Madam, a warm welcome to you. I'll also be joined by my political editor, Brijesh Pandey, Major General Sanjay Meston, and Lam Thing Thang, Haukep social activist. A very warm welcome. There are a couple of issues we have in front of us. One, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, he has left for the United States of America. It's supposed to be a very big, important visit. But what happened to the meeting? What happened in the meeting that took place between HM and couple of other lawmakers? Then a sort of a press conference by Chief Minister Biren Singh in which he is specifically talking about cookie arm militants. His bite, not mine. His words, not mine. It's a warning and he said health and education are the priority sector which means free movement of children for education and health means people's ability to get treated. It's like to create a sense of ordinariness. And I think it's the sense of ordinariness which an ordinary Manipuri must be missing because that creates normalcy. We are also going to talk about a couple of reports which have been published. And those reports are on creation of buffer zone. One of the leading newspapers from New Delhi has reported that army has done a mapping in which they have concluded this conclusion that the worst violence have taken place where two ethnicities are overlapping. Now, if we say that we create a buffer, isn't it like creating two mental spaces? Isn't it like giving into the logic of two administrations? Because you have created a buffer zone. So is, is that tactic correct to stabilize the situation? Or can that tactic mentally and physically separate two spaces, which a big section of Manipuri population does not want, which is the context of territorial integrity? So, you dissect it from within. Then we have a reaction from Sitaram Yachuri. And lastly, we are also going to talk about the drug mafia. What is it? The seizures. How many tons of drugs have been seized? 271 tons. Where? And we have seen the epidemic. of opiates in Mizoram. It's well documented. And now India has to deal with drugs in its northeastern border when it's already suffering from the Afghan drugs in Punjab, very locally and popularly in a narrative known as Chitta. So first, let us play the bite of Chief Minister Beren Singh. Then I'll play out the bite of Sitaram Yachuri. And then we'll start our conversation on What's happening in New Delhi? It gets in the early morning, around 1.30 I got information and I immediately informed to the, uh, talked to the army personnel also, one Mr. Bijay, Colonel SS. And uh, he assured me that he will look after the matter and uh, immediately he called the fire tender and uh, he doused the fire, he told me. But I am also thinking how the fire has come in such a security zone area and uh, how it was happened. So now I am going to have a review meeting of the security and how it is, uh, how it was happened and uh, how we can prevent it in future. So this type of thing has to be stopped immediately. I appeal to uh, 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 mainly the Sukuki militant to stop it otherwise they will face the consequences and I also appeal to the uh, peoples or mighty peoples who are with arms not to attack anything any anything please do keep maintained peace and uh, so that we can 
restores normalcy in the state of Manipur. A uh, very positive. I uh, Zoram Thanga is well experienced uh, and the senior most minister in the entire Norris. And uh, I inform him that uh, some of the some of the peoples, uh, some of the Manipuri, Maiti peoples mainly residing there, are little bit facing apprehension be, uh, due to the ongoing uh, crisis in the state of Manipur. Mm -hmm. So immediately uh, he called me in the morning and he assured me that nothing will be happen. Mm -hmm. And I also asked him that as a uh, senior uh, and experienced minister, uh, the whatever the uh, happening in the state of Manipur, uh, you can have dialogue with the uh, both teams so that uh, we can meet again and we can uh, bring the normalcy in the state. And I also request him to give safety those maitis who are living in the state of Mizoram. And he also assured me that that kind of things, nothing will be happen, and all the maitis who are living in the Mizoram will be safe. I also assured him that those river Mizos here in the state of Manipur, they will be protected, they will be safe. You know, very, very sad scenario. Uh, I visited uh, some of the relief camp, and uh, people are suffering. Mainly, always personal persons, children, women, they are suffering. And the government is trying to help at the best level. Today, I visited some area, and the uh, state government is going to construct prefabricated houses to accommodate them temporarily till the permanent settlement is taken place to ship at their previous places. So around 3,000 to 4,000 temporary houses will be constructed. Today also at this place, around 32 families are here. We are looking the place where the new construction can be done with the help of the club's member. And uh, we have already ordered the prefabricated materials to this Imphal within 10 15 days and uh, within one and a half months and a maximum two months we can provide all the facility so that the, those who are in the relief camp can be seated at the fabricated houses. I don't think so. I don't think so because you know we are going to open the schools up to class 8 only and because education we cannot we cannot laugh education and health due to this uh, prevailing situation. We have to give priority on education and health. So I think it is my earnest appeal and the request to the, all the all the people of the state not to disturb in educational part and the health sector because it is the uh, most needed being a human beings for the present generation and for the future generation. I appeal to uh, 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 mainly the Sukuki militant to stop it otherwise they will face the consequences and I also appeal to the uh, peoples or mighty peoples who are with arms not to attack anything any anything please to keep maintain peace and uh, so that we can resource normalcy in the state of Manipur Developments that are taking place in Manipur are not developments that are confined only to Manipur or to the Northeast. These are developments that concern the whole of India and they are very critical to be resolved in a proper, peaceful manner for our country's unity and integrity. So it's not an issue that is specific to one geographical location, but it is the country's problem that has to be resolved by all of us in the country as a whole, number one. Number two, it's very unfortunate that despite all these days, more than 40 days now, 
when the trouble started from the 3rd of May yes. till now, the Prime Minister has not responded at all to the situation. This delegation has been here for some days now. Yes, yes, more than 10 days. More than 10 days. Yes, yes. Waiting for an appointment from the Prime Minister. They have sent it in writing, they have sent it verbally, they have conveyed it to him, but he doesn't find the time. And you have the Home Minister going there after 29 days, after the trouble began, and also produced no tangible result. So the main point that I would like to say on behalf of the CPIM is it's most unfortunate and unbecoming of the Prime Minister not to meet this delegation or not to express any opinion on what is happening in Manipur or to take any steps in order to resolve that issue. Thirdly, after listening to this uh, views uh, uh, by the mem leaders of the, uh, who are here now as part of the delegation, one thing that is becoming that has become very very clear is this Biren Singh government, the BJP state government, its continuation is become untenable, and it's it's no longer in a position whereby it can contribute to restoring normalcy and peace in the state. Substantive discussions and talks can can begin. Once this administration of the present government does not continue to control the government, the central government's intervention and the state government, the so-called double engine, the double engine, both the engines seems to be seem to be moving in opposite directions. You don't have a, any common commonality of approach of, of things that is happening. Therefore, this government's continuation in Manipur is at the moment untenable and it doesn't have that authority today to continue to remain in government. So that, once that is done, then with, the, with all the other political parties, the central government must initiate a proper dialogue discussion to find a solution and a solution that will be lasting and contribute for strengthening India's unity and integrity. So on behalf of the CPM, we assure them of all our cooperation and our desire that the first uh, first priority today is to restore peace and normalcy. Nishikanji, my first question here is that uh, the meeting was supposed to take place with the Prime Minister. Uh, some lawmakers met Home Minister and sub submitted individual memorandums. Uh, can you shed some light on that, sir? Uh, regarding the memorandum given to the Prime Minister? Yes. Yesterday. Uh, you see, we, I personally, there was a lot of pressure from the people in Manipur. Uh, for them, uh, for us, they wanted us to uh, go and meet the central leaf. Uh, prior to that, there was a meeting before, uh, one day before uh, uh, Mr. Hemad Biswas was in Manipur. 25 MLAs along with uh, most of the ministers, of course the chief minister wasn't there. Was, that meeting was held in the speaker's uh, chamber in Manipur Legislative Assembly where everybody had decided that we should go to Delhi. After that, Mr. Himanta Biswas came, so the next meeting, there were just fewer people. And then, uh, I'm just telling you a series sequence. Uh, and then, on 12th, the Honorable Chief Minister had a press uh, conference where uh, I was called on by the uh, CMO, and I went there to be a part of that. After that, I went back. And uh, the Honorable Chief Minister did call me, asked me why I wasn't there for tea, and I told him uh, I had to meet somebody. I said, I'm going to Delhi tomorrow because the pressure is so high on us uh, and, uh, and and then I was I mean I was totally communicating with the chief minister all of us and I landed up here and uh, then I saw on the 14th uh, some few other minister um, MLAs were here BJP MLAs and uh, then the NPP said well we'll go our own way so I was rather surprised and, they, and anyway so on 16th uh, so on 15th we gave our uh, uh, email send an email for appointment which was acknowledged by the PMO and uh, they said that in a few days we'll fix a meeting with you guys. Anyway, 16th, uh, I saw a missed call from the Honorable Chief Minister. I called him back and he asked me about the thing. I said, I think in a couple of days we should get a meeting. Uh, uh, but Nishikanji, uh, uh, why? Uh, isn't there no, a No, I'm coming to that. Hmm. So then suddenly, uh, 
a group of uh, MLAs came from Manipur and uh, I, I wasn't communicated, uh, came and they told the group that I was with, we were here for Manipur, all of us, uh, that uh, we are going to meet the uh, defense minister. You, your names are not there. Anyway, so they went and met the chief, honorable defense minister. So we thought we've been sitting here and prime minister might move on tomorrow. That was yesterday. So we thought, Tello, whatever we can do for Manipur. So we went and submitted the memorandum. All in the interest, larger interest of Manipur. And here, you know, I just want to uh, appeal to everybody. Uh, that delegation yesterday uh, to meet the <coughs> defense minister was led by the honorable speaker and the uh, Rajya Sabha M uh, MP. See, the goal is one. So I think that all of us cutting across party lines we should get it, you know, become one and look out for Manipur. Pa politics can happen later on. So I think we should, uh, we need to unite you know, and try and do whatever we have to do together instead of doing petty politics here. To, I appeal to all, all politicians of Manipur. Isn't that one thing, Madam Kim, that is not happening? MLAs have met along the community lines. And uh, there is a, there is a, I wouldn't say lack of it, but a bit of a lackadaisical attitude in context of uh, multiple levels uh, meetings which, have, which could have taken place with the lawmakers, elected lawmakers, you know, at the home secretary level, uh, home minister level, at multiple levels those meetings would have taken place. That seems to be absent. Oh, <coughs> that's very true. As I watch the TV shows and the speeches by various representatives as well as um, other leaders, I could see sharp differences in opinion and also the thinking, the thought could be read from the expression of the faces. So ultimately you can see it that even what you have just said is the index of the mind that they come to Delhi or try to meet the ministers, prime ministers separately, that is already there even before. So I don't think I have to explain more than this because everyone knows, you know, so this is the dividing line. This is the dividing line. Uh, Brijesh, your thoughts on it, if you are uh, if, if, if you are there with me, that, uh, you know, the meeting couldn't take place with the Prime Minister, it took place with the Defence Minister, and uh, the sort of multiple level of meetings which could have happened seems to be lacking? Well, I don't, honestly, I don't think uh, that, you know, that there was going to be any meeting uh, with the Prime Minister uh, before his departure for the United States. Maybe once he's back from the United States, and his uh, extended tour, uh, then there could be a meeting. But before that, uh, chances of that meeting was highly unlikely, as uh, we were told by uh, PMO officials. Uh, uh, one another thing is that yes, uh, as uh, Nishkanji is saying, uh, that you know that there is a deep divide, and uh, in this hour of crisis, also uh, there there are individuals or groups you know who do not uh, have, hesitate to score a brownie uh, brownie point. Uh, you know, as to project themselves as somebody, you know, who's the only one or the group is the only group which is trying to stay ahead and talk about how to end uh, the political crisis that is unfolding uh, in the state of Manipur. I think uh, I completely agree with you when you say that, uh, that you know, that this uh, Manipur is facing a very uh, big crisis at its hand. And I mean, the kind of humanitarian crisis which is unfolding there, you know, forget violence and most of the things uh, is, is, is simply struggling. And uh, I think if you are, if, if anybody who's a representative of Manipur would, uh, a real representative of Manipur would uh, want to douse the fire and not, uh, uh, you know, expand it or extend it. Uh, so, uh, you know, all the political parties, all the political MLAs should come together uh, to find a solution. But Kartike, you know, we have been covering this crisis from May 3rd and going by, uh, I'm going purely by, based on the, you know, our interaction with the intelligence of both Kuki as well as Maitis and also the lawmaker, you know, the tone and tenor of, 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 the, of the conversation is, is, is very disheartening. I don't see that, you know, uh, we get to see any time soon about, uh, you know, this meeting of minds, if I may say so, among uh, the political class uh, to make sure that uh, the situation in Manipur uh, returns to normal. Okay? Yes, the Dil uh, that, that, that is very, very much understandable. Uh, General Mester, you know, my, my comments uh, on 
buffer zone you must have heard the first thing i would like to know from you is because there are two things happening one is one is birin singh uh, taking a political line he has taken a position on certain issues another another is that the army mapping out area and trying to cre create a buffer zone can you shed more light if if the, there's a buffer zone between the cookies and the methi dominated uh, areas aren't you creating a sort of a uh, two different uh, administrative units within a state if you if you if you create a buffer like that pratikam good morning morning uh, firstly i have actually not understood uh, uh, what is the concept uh, being uh, thought of of this buffer zone because buffer zones like today we are talking about a buffer zone or some uh, uh, areas uh, between india and china on these areas of differences now here we are all one nationality we are all indians we are all manipuris and therefore i have not understood what is the concept and the thought behind this buffer zone probably is it to segregate the two communities and make them feel secure i think that is uh, not a wise idea at all rather it could have been reversed the solution uh, and another point i could uh, add on it i just heard Uh, that uh, uh, the delegation mlas etc wanted to meet the prime minister i assume if the meeting would have been granted uh, by the prime minister and if this problem would have been projected to him the prime minister first and foremost would have only told one thing you are the elected mlas you have a proper body it is your state you run it and enforce peace and bring peace prime minister can only support in terms of giving moral support other kinds of support we have already been inducted a lot of security forces but prime minister of india cannot today go and start running a particular state states are run by the elected people uh, uh, by the elected representatives who have to run a state and exactly this is what the prime minister would have uh, stated so that is why perhaps he may or uh, i am not aware why he has not met them but uh, what i am trying to say is what is the solution every day everyone is talking about like even i heard the chief minister stating yes he has stated some things but i think even the tone and tenor was very firm for a particular ethnicity and for the other it was literally sort of a different uh, tone and tenor so when the thought process of the so called elected leaders is targeting uh, each other's uh, ethnicity i think there is no solution let the people of uh, manipur come up with solution all these states wherever such kinds of problem happen the solution has to be home grown not externally uh, you know being aided by the neighboring uh, states uh, like mizoram or nagaland or assam it has to be home grown it's a manipuri problem so firstly the people of manipur and by these elected uh, representative they must today start having peace marches if i was there i would have done this is the four foremost thing why should you segregate people into uh, buffer zones we should have peace marches get people from both the ethnicities women children elderly people make them walk together no militant group will fire on them that is point 1 point 2 is when we are talking about militant groups it is not that one ethnicity as a militant group my first posting in the indian army in 1982 happened from the same very area and let me state very candidly i met the people who were there from both ethnicities and frankly i could not even identify who is from which ethnicity because in the army we even don't talk on the ethnic lines for us they were all indians they were all manipuris the people coexisted there they have been coexisting since ages so why this sudden unrest has happened obviously it is some when uh, some kind of a uh, interest of some some individuals who want to provoke this violence deliberately incite violence and the common people from both the ethnicities unfortunately they get carried away and who is suffering in the end these uh, common people are suffering so let the common people come up with the solutions uh, you know we have to look for solutions as an army general today for my problems i cannot go to the army chief sir you handle it no i been paid for that i been made a divisional commander or whatever commander i have to run my own uh, place of uh, work i have to have good uh, team work and team work means we don't uh, you know have people 
uh, stating that he is from particular community or religion or ethnicity. No, mm -hmm. everyone is, is a Manipuri and therefore use all the Manipuri. And let me tell you today, if I was to go be there, my first action would have been speak to the women, speak to the children. Uh, today we are closing schools, get all these, uh, why should schools be closed? Get all these children together, take them march together and it, uh, peace marches, call them. Uh, have banners. We are Manipuris. We are not Metis. We are not Pukis. We are Manipuris. We belong to Manipur. This is our homeland. These kind of banners will make such a difference. No one uh, is talking about solutions. Everyone is talking it's a historical issue. My first question is if it was historical or geographical or whatever it is culturally, then how these people have been uh, coexisting uh, for ages together? I have myself seen them and not that I only went in 82. I was there for four okay. years. After that, number of times I've been visiting this state, we, we have been to uh, both the valley and the hill area. People are so nice, whether it is a Methi or whether it is a Kuki. So some people are dividing them and is division the answer for a, uh, for the for this uh, state? No, it, it is going to be exploited uh, by China, uh, by ISI and it does not suit the interest of India. So firstly, let us not only talk about a uh, ethnic <coughs> militant, all ethnicities, let me be very candid, have got militant organizations. You want to name, I can name them. Let us disarm them. First, let's get them to on peace talks. Let us disarm them, demobilize them, and reintegrate them into the mainstream of Manipur, irrespective of their ethnicities. Okay. I think I, I, I think I, I think uh, th th that's a good point. Is it possible to disarm all these uh, militant organizations today? Uh, uh, first of all, like uh, the uh, Honorable Home Minister said, that ground rule will be adhered to, so ground rule. And uh, when things happen, it has to happen simultaneously. It cannot be one way. So here, uh, we, are, we are not, Maitais are not fighting the cookies. The Maitais are fighting the cookie militants. And everybody, every immigrant is not a cookie. There are cookies who are Manipuris. There are many people from coming across the border. They are different. So uh, the appeal is about that. So when you disarm, you have to disarm both sides. The first thing you have to disarm everybody, both sides from the hills and from the valley. You know, the problem is where there's, you said that buffer zone, mm -hmm. buffer zone where uh, two communities are living very closely with each other. This is a buffer zone uh, to my understanding is to create uh, some sort of a temporary peace kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So you have to disarm everybody. So then only you can talk about all other things and about the peace, like I said, that uh, the neutral <laughs> groups, like for example, the Manipuri Nagas, the Manipuri uh, Maitai Muslims, uh, the CSOs have to play a major role, but you have to put out the fire first. And uh, there must be accountability, like the General Saab says, it's my duty, yes, it's his duty, he's being paid for that. So whoever, I mean, everybody, the government and every officer uh, who's there on the field is accountable for, it should be accountable for everything. And that happens in Manipur. But then, uh, you know, I, I like to join Mr. Haukip also. You know, there is one thing which is uh, evidently missing and that uh, evidently missing thing is peace marches. And he's right, you know, yes. many a times a lot of social strife has happened in many parts of the country. But, you know, within 20 days, 15 days, 7 days, the peace march, interfaith community or inter-ethnic community, it kicks into action. That has not happened in Manipur. It's pretty evident. Even the demand for peace has taken place on ethnic lines, done peacefully but on ethnic lines in Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, even there, the cookies have demanded peace, Maitis have demanded peace, there has been no inter-ethnic or in, they have not come together to demand peace. Those visuals are missing. I have not seen them. 44 days, I have not seen them. Mr. Aukit. Well, thank you, sir for having me here and secondly i would like to thank the news nine for hearing the concern of manipur the people of manipur thirdly before i come to your point i would like to say i would not hesitate to say this is a state-sponsored terrorism time and again i repeat this is state-sponsored terrorism because had it not been the state-sponsored terrorism the state government led by mr birain could have stopped could have contained this violence at least on the 3rd of may he could have contained within Tirzanpur district not to that spread in the imphal valley and other districts that is my third point and my fourth point as you said whatever there are peace march peace rally across the cities across the state 
by both communities. What did happen? What have we seen? Within these 15 days, that Home Minister appealed for peace, to maintain calm, to refrain from violence. We have seen all. Everyone is a witness what is happening within these 15 days. And my fourth point is to the, in response to the ex-Major General Sanjay Saab, with due respect, sir, I would rather say it, there soon be, there couldn't be, as of now, couldn't be any such uh, people's integration, marching for the peace, uh, coming together, and the entire valleys uh, has been burned down. The Cookie Joe families, their houses, their properties has been looted, and their villages, uh, their churches, their, everything has been burned down. And also in the same way, in the hill area as well, our mighty brethren's houses were burned down, but not looted. I, I should say this, not looted, but their houses were burned down but on both sides. So the division is so deep-rooted, the mistrust is so deep-rooted, that at this point in time, I would rather feel people should not come together at one point and march for the peace, because to happen that first, there is a prerequisite measures prerequisite measures to take place by the government, the central government, because nobody trusts the state government led by Mr. Birain. Now, my fifth point is, Mr. How in you response said, to... Mr. Haukip, you said the Mr. houses were burned down, not, not looted. Can you elaborate on that? Of course. As you can see, in the valley, most of the majority community, after burning down or after... Uh, destroying the properties, the house of the Kukizo family. They have been looted. All the wealth has been looted, as you can see. Nobody can deny this. But in the hill areas, have you seen any such things? Looting the properties of our valley people, settling in the hill areas? For instance, in my own in my own areas, in Modbung Kampukwi district, have you seen any such looting of properties of the Maiti communities by the tribals, the tribal Kukichin groups? In the Churisanpu district, have you seen this? Have you heard about that? Have you have any report on that? Nothing as such. And like I said, let me come to in response to Sir Nisikanta. With due respect, sir, I've heard all your interviews. But to me, I would like to respond to you today. Now, did you ever, now do you admit that there is a difference between, within your party? There are three groups within your party. Second thing is, do you still believe in the leadership of your Chief Minister and Birin Singh? Do you still believe in his leadership? When your own party, your own MLAs are divided into three groups, did you still believe in the leadership of Mr. Birin? And coming to the other narratives that like Mr. Mr. Chief Haukip, Minister Mr. Haukip, and Birin Singh... Have, you have asked three questions his, to Nishikanti. Yes. Let him respond now. Because, you know, in the show you have directly... Uh, uh, gone to the guest, let the guest respond to it then. Okay. Yes, Take your time, so, sir. Uh, number one, uh, number one, it's never a one-sided thing. You can never clap with one hand. If the houses were burned, why were they burned? First of all, you shouldn't have burned them. Now, I thought we come here to reconcile. So much has happened. You keep looking at the passes. You keep trying to trade charges. It'll never end. I can give you many, many... It's receivers. coming, it's coming. So it's I think coming. we shouldn't go back it to that. Come. Otherwise, we, I can say, you know, that the video come. came where you were burning Maitai homes in uh, Shura Chanpur with AK-47. I can say that. That's what sparked off. So uh, what I'm trying to say is that don't start trading charges of because course, it's never ending. Anchor, and I also tell you one. Would you allow me to speak? Me? When uh, you were Mr. speaking, Haukip. I was quiet. Yes, Mr. Haukip? Mr. Haukip? Mr. Haukip? No, no, Mr. Haukip. You let Nishikanji complete. It's not a TV debate. It's I always say that. It's not a TV debate. I didn't interrupt you. The only time I said, please stop, because you had made three, you raised three issues, big issues. So let uh, Mr. Singh respond to it. Then, you know, the mic will be yours. See, uh, so, uh, so uh, what I want to say is that I, both sides, all innocent people have been victims. And I strongly condemn every violence that happened, whether it was happened in the hills or in the <coughs> Imphal Valley, I condemn that. But I'll also tell you, because Imphal being the capital, whatever happened was covered very well by almost all media. But what happened in the hills was not covered that well. So I understand that the richer class of our Kuki brothers 
uh, who were staying in Imphal, their houses were burned, destroyed. At the same time, the poor Maitai families, their homes were burnt. But don't try to equate that this is a bigger house, a small house or something like that. Because for the poor man, that house is his mandir, his palace. And he, I don't think he can rebuild it again, whereas a rich man can probably. So let's not start trading charges. And what was the second point uh, he raised? Uh, is there a division no, in Bharti Janata? No, there is no division. There was a slight mistake and people have read too much into it. And if you'll notice that I, from day one, I am the only uh, 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 MLA who has come online on TV and defended Mr. N. Biren Singh. I still defend him because I am an independent MLA uh, supporting the BJP. Whoever the BJP puts as leader, whoever. I, I support that person, irrespective of whoever it is. So I defend that. Yes, I would understand that when third, when things happened, it should have never been a cookie uh, maitai thing. It should have been a the cookie miscreants versus the government of Manipur. That day, I think uh, the system failed, the administration failed, mm -hmm. and therefore it went people versus people. And then, if you'll notice, after uh, fifth, sixth, everything ca calmed down, and the, uh, the 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 curfew was relaxed till five o'clock every day. And uh, in between, in fact, I come to Delhi also. And uh, when Mr. Uh, Amit Shah ji announced his uh, visit to Manipur on 27, suddenly it was just too well planned, well orchestrated. Imagine the entire valley was being attacked from all directions. And these is attacks this, is this on the 27th. Is, yeah, is I'm telling you, I'm telling you, uh, had Manipur had cooled down. On 29th, uh, Home Minister was supposed to come because he's going back. I didn't want to go back. Because it's not a one-way traffic, boss. You can never clap with one hand. So on 27th, imagine the valley like this. You can't come, walk and you know cover that distance from every angle. There was suddenly huge attack, you know, and there were people had snipers, people had AK-47. They're not ordinary people. Therefore, I said now this second round is Maitai versus the armed, not the normal cookie. This thing, the armed militant cookie groups. Uh, the, there are, I'm not, all cookie brothers are not militants. I'm talking about that particular militant group. They were attacked from all around. Then it went berserk. Then again, when they started returning the arms, then the arms were also looted from wherever. So, everybody... I just want to ask you, you're a lawmaker. One thing which really, first of all, you know, even sniper guns, you know, I'll come to General Meston. They have not been used even in Kashmir theatre like this. Exactly. Uh, I mean to say, where have these guns come and how, how, how and today, you know, Shocking it's a privilege actually. to sit with you face to face. Itna asani se Amri luta kaise gaya? Prashant chin hai boss. Nahi nahi, Amri luta gaya after the effect of attack. You know, attack was happening. There are, I mean, I know some people with uh, sniper guns, you hit here, it goes through, you know. So, all that thing provoked again, once again, it provoked and then it went on fire. And, and then now I think things are uh, cooling down a little bit. So I didn't want to visit the past because when you visit the past, you know, you just keep trading charges and things like that. It's now time to reconcile, look ahead and make a beautiful Manipur. Khun kharaab aasa to hoga nahi. Samjhauta se hoga, pyaar bapat se hoga. I think we should work towards that. You know, two things in my comments. And, and uh, one more thing, mm -hmm. the BJP is not divided. Let me be very clear. There could have been misunderstandings because a big party, some people landed up, uh, like I, I explained to you, I landed up early, so there's no divide. To, uh, today, uh, Chief Minister calls me up, I'll pick up the call, I'll talk to him like I always talk to him. And I still support the leadership of the PDP as long as whoever is there, whether it is Mr. Biryan Singh, I still support the leadership. Simple uh, and, and one more thing, you know, it's not, it's, it's not a, uh, it's, it's, it's not a uh, easy thing for the security forces. Uh, General Meston, uh, you know, one news has coming and I want to, I want you to just respond quickly to that. 51 mm motors are being seized. You know, this news has just come in that there was a violence which took place in Lilong uh, today. People have been arrested and 51 mm motor has been recovered. Yeah, very true. Uh, if the 51 mm motors have been uh, recovered, obviously, what is the source of the motors? From the security forces deployed in our own country, none of these weapons can go out. Yes, weapons of police have been uh, more than 1,000 weapons have gone away, but I think in those uh, motors were not there and a police force as it is, is not equipped with motors. Obviously, these uh, motors have now come from across. And that day also I mentioned for China, the biggest interest is that irrespective of the ethnicities, just Manipur should burn, equip, arm, both the, or, uh, both the militant uh, groups of all the uh, these ethnicities so that they keep fighting 
and the security forces also in the bargain will be committed they will be overspread they also would suffer the budget of the armed forces would uh, be affected and uh, maybe in the bargain some casualties also may be imposed on the security forces who are operating and the distrust between the locals and the security forces also would be there so all this suits china and obviously i say and i mentioned that the myanmar army army is so corrupt that for them they are the conduit and now if this is going to, yeah so 51 mm mortars obviously is uh, been coming from there and now uh, let me also tell you i think uh, one of the points was made that it is only uh, militant from uh, this particular ethnicity no i don't agree there are militants from both the ethnicities all people sitting here and the entire nation knows all army people know the intelligence people know that all these ethnicities have got militant organizations so let us not deny on to that fact to only blame uh, a particular ethnicity would be highly incorrect because uh, these are uh, the harsh facts so let's accept it that is why I stated it is possible to firstly get into peace talks with all these militant organizations it has to be a long uh, drawn process so once it okay. is agreed upon there after we disarm them Uh, demobilize them and reintegrate them uh, uh, into okay. uh, the let me give you some more information sir let me give more information the arrested person have been identified as horangam ranjit uh, nagam gom shantamaiti abujam naoba and mutum robindra uh, the tata safari number uh, registration number as01 bh4431 national highway 2 and uh, this happened in thubal district they were moving towards in thubal and they were moving towards in far but you know uh, apart from this you know do you think the political solution madam lies with nrc or you think the political solution lies with separate administration because when we talk about nrc it's about finding out the illegal immigrants nrc means who have come from outside and you know they are settled there so you, you you have to ensure that they are not part of the political process they don't do something which has happened in assam or something like bodo autonomous council i am opening this i'm just broadening it out uh, you know because a lot of questions on military and tactics have already been uh, answered on this program now i'm making slightly more political where does the political solution lie you know it's like uh, you have to have an out of the box thinking um NRC I myself support NRC I have also urged the government of Manipur that if there are immigrants from any community not only the cookies from the meites from the meite pagans that's the muslims and the nagas because I know myself that there are also among the valley dwellers who come from outside i mean the meites and also some friends from the nagas so if we are demanding nrc to solve this problem i was the one who really supported it and i urged the government of manipur to detect in if any uh, illegal immigrants have entered into this country it is the the responsibility of the government to detect find out and see under uh under which umbrella they should be kept you know or deport them i have been urging the government time and again but the government of manipur listens nobody you know please go ahead, yeah. please go ahead. no one is you interrupting not. you yeah no. yeah i know I know our honorable MLA is going to agree with me. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. So, today I am very sorry, but at the same time I'm going to say that I will never be trapped into this this mud slinging that you are wrong, I'm right, he is right, he is wrong. I'm not going to trap myself in this. One thing. The mate uh let me take few minutes. the meites and the cookies live together peacefully and if the cookies are being uh, accused of not allowing or the tribals not allowing the the valley people to settle down in the hill areas i think my status with them is the same you know why because the hill areas are 
uh, I mean, the villages are owned by the uh, so-called chiefs of villages. And if I want to s go and stay, I have to get, you know, some kind of uh, permission from the chief. Maybe I take, I go and boil tea, or I go and give him one shawl and ask him if I could get a place in that village. So likewise, uh, I think we all are the same, the same status. Now, in Churachanpu district, there were uh, two, three Meite villages, very big villages, uh, lo localities, where, uh, where we have been living together. And mind you, they were also in the list, I mean, in the voters list, around seven, 8,000 voters, Meite voters in this hill district. At the same time, in Tungnopal district, in More, there are many, many Meite brothers and sis sisters who have settled down there. And they were listed in the voters list and in Kangpopi district. So wherever the cookies, I mean, live, our Meite brothers and sisters also live together. We all live together. Whereas in Naga uh, inhabited areas like Okrul, you don't find any Meite village. In Tamenglong and Senapati districts, the Naga inhabited areas, no Meite village is found, not even one single village. And they are they were they are not in the voters list. Okay. So what I'm trying to come to a a uh, point is that cookies and metes live together, even in the hill districts. Maybe not in the interior parts, because there are no, um, no roads. Basically, you saying that they are composite villages, even in the hills. Yes, it's yes. It's not as if uh, metes are only living in the valley and uh, cookies are living in uh, the hill area. That's the point metes you're making, Metes also live, and we also live in the valley, in the, around Imphal. Yeah. Why, w why I have a house in... But why are uh, most of the cookie intellectuals I've spoken to talking about separate administration? Well, why has that come up? You know, I didn't read any article six months ago. Yeah. I, I did not read no, no, any no. Uh, uh, academic paper on it six months ago. No, there was a long-standing demand. It was a long-standing demand. Maybe dormant, but it it's like uh, it's like something just came out of the box and said, well, focus on me. No, no, I think it, there is no long-standing yes, yes. demand. I, I'll explain, I'll explain. You see these, the Sioux groups, we the civilians did not know anything about these, uh, you know, the, the talk, the agreement that the Sioux groups had with the state government Tripod. and also the, st the center government. And what they said uh, later on was TC or something like that. The Kuki civilians did not know anything about it. So, uh, let me come to this point. I think, Miss, not only thing I'm convinced, the CM is responsible in the state. And the center, I want to blame the center. Today, Mr. Biren Singh calls the Kuki, the so called, the Sioux groups, terrorists. If the Kuki uh, Sioux groups are terrorists, why build designated camps for them? Why do you build designated camps for the terrorists? And why do you fund them? Why do you give them salary per month? Some few thousands, I heard, is being given. And today, when they do not fit into your narrative, you call them terrorists. I am a victim. Let me be very clear. Let me be very open. I am a victim of this manipulation. Why? When I contested parliamentary election, these two groups were summoned somewhere in Guwahati. I don't know what kind of agreement they had. So they, uh, the, I heard the Sioux group leaders had gone there or I don't know where the, in the CM's bungalow. But Today, as you see, this is a charge you are making. I'm charging. There's no proof. This is the charge. Wait, I'm the proof. No. I'm the proof. What? Because let me tell you. There's no proof. Uh, 
No, no, please don't say that. I'm the victim. I'm the victim. Mm -hmm. I have been, I have been kidnapped also. Let me tell you. I was not allowed to contest. Madam, you are contest. making a big statement. You are a former member of parliament. Yes, that time, that time. Oh, well, in, in politics, you cannot say that. You kidnapped you. you one of the Sioux groups. Okay. When? So, that was a few years back. So, the Sioux groups were supporting the BJP candidate. And I was CPI candidate. So, but I'm so happy to say that my women groups, the Kuki women, the Meitei women, can, all got can together. I, can, I, can, can I just say? One second, you, one second. You know, on this, you know, madam, no, on, this, on, you know, on, on this, I would just like to get yeah. our political editor, Bijesh Pandey, because, you know, he's, a, he's my, our solid hand but on But let BJP me finish analysis. first and then, yes. okay. Because okay. you, mm. Okay. So, my women group, particularly the Meitei women, the Kuki women, were right there behind me. And they were in front. And then, of course, I'm so happy as a human rights activist. You know, my people were there. And, of course, uh, the Sioux groups did not try to really harm me. They were just keeping me at the foot of the hill. Mm. So my women were there and the right-thinking people all around. And I, wa I came back. And you know where I was kept? I was kept in Tongzhu. Who kept you there? My women, the civilians. Okay. Tongzhu is a Meitei Lei Kai. I know. I was kept there. So, this is, that's why I said I was a victim. And what's second point? Second point. Let me, now today. Let me just press upon one point you're making. Uh, Bridges, uh, you must have heard, uh, you must have heard uh, Madam Gangte speak on it. You know, what is this issue of uh, cookie militants and, you know, elections? Is it, is it about that letter? I think so. Uh, yes, uh, you know, that particular letter which was released seven days back, Karthike, uh, created a major uh, political storm because, uh, you know, uh, once the uh, Hemantha Vishwasarma also visited, you know, post Amishra's visit uh, to, uh, to Manipur and he said it's a goodwill visit. Uh, you know, then two days later, reports came out that he has met... Uh, a uh, couple of uh, cookie groups and also, and uh, uh, you know, they said they they, they issued a statement uh, in support of Hemanta Vishwasarma being, uh, uh, you know, reposing their faith in Hemanta Vishwasarma. And this particular letter, uh, which has which had come out a uh, week back, uh, talked about how cookie militants helped uh, BJP uh, win election, and uh, it also named uh, the then uh, BJP uh, convener, or as far as the northeast is concerned. Uh, Ram Madhav, uh, they was also there. So I think, I mean, you know, this uh, particular allegation, which was uh, this particular letter, uh, many believe is, is, is something which has put uh, a, a kind of question mark about, you know, how uh, the BJP, uh, you know, fought the election in the in the northeastern state. And, you know, now today when uh, when uh, the chief minister says that, uh, uh, that two groups are responsible and, you know, strict action will be taken, uh, I would just like to draw one attention also, you know, as uh, uh, Western was saying, uh, that you know when he spoke about uh, the cookie militants and terrorists you know, the tone and tenor was something else and when he spoke about uh, Maiti's group his tone was completely different uh, so I think you know uh, this this does put a spotlight on the fact that whether uh, few militant groups uh, uh, you know in actual uh, help Hemant uh, Vishwasarma, BJP and Ram Madhav uh, you know that letter was uh, pretty damning I must say that, uh, Mr. Haukip is there a and then you can come sir then you can come is there a stereotyping which happened of the cookies i i don't uh, that you know is a bar se aage hai, militants hai. is that a stereotyping that has happened in the narrative of coverage journalistic coverage because you know every uh, well, day i you uh, know i every day the reason that. why i'm asking is I am so every sorry. day i, I, I mr hauke the reason why I'm asking is because every day I get kicked around, you know, aapne metis ko kam samay diya, aapne cookies ko kam samay diya. And I, I'm, I'm like, you know, Everybody. I'm not supposed to keep a clock uh, in, in front of me. You know, it's not like that. Half of the time professors have come, they have taken different positions. Professors from JNU Hyderabad have taken positions of their community on this show. But I've called them as professors. I have called them as researchers. I have called them as people, you know, <laughs> who, you know who, who, who are teaching people. But mm. they have taken position. But one thing uh, I also realize is mm -hmm. that this line that cookie, all cookies, you know, the cookies have come from outside. Drug business, 
do you think that the stereotyping took place in the first 15 days in uh, in, uh, in the popular narrative <laughs> this is not this is not just 15 days or so it's been a year this stereotyping has been made upon yeah. against the cookies believe me let, let me be very clear on this first there are illegal immigrants i should say influx from international border and we all know the situation in myanmar and of course those people who come all over from myanmar are the kinder tribes the kinder tribes of the cookies and in fact these illegal immigrants may be in hundreds maybe in thousands but what is the government doing do we accept do we pose any question on that what is the government doing instead of blaming that cookies are illegal immigrants yeah. what is the government doing at the border and second thing and second thing second thing mr birain and also the entire our valley majority in mlas are speaking about these narco terrorists even the cso civil society leaders also said it take it this soo group as narco terrorists do we have any proof at the meantime do uh, there is any investigation so far to prove your claim to prove your allegation so well like mrs kim said these so called suspension of operation groups whom today the majority in community call it including the chief minister call it and narco terrorists are they not the people are they not the groups of cookie militants groups whom they whom they uh, yes. gain a political end in forming bjp government in the state yes they are used and thrown now what exactly is this and i am amused to say that mr nisikanta is still justifying looting of not exactly looting it is a well planned giving condemn. away of Sorry, arms and ammunition i condemn mr hawkeep i have a i condemn mr hawkeep mr hawkeep i have a, I have a, Haukip, I have a request no, 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 i condemn read my lips mr hawkeep mr hawkeep i i i have to say one thing nisikan ji is not sitting here because he belongs to some group he is sitting here because he speaks profoundly about his state manipur i do not call people on my show because they belong to certain communities mr okay please say this again read my again. lips i condemn every act of violence very strongly beyond words i condemn read my lips mr okay. understand uh, and let so, me do uh, let me in the same don't understand, way read let me say this let me say this mr sharma give me a second please if if at all if at all narratives of maite is fighting against the cookie militants groups are those villages in the hills as well as are those cookies in the valleys are militant groups whose houses are burned whose homes are looted whose houses are destroyed who are killed who are raped are they militants groups it's not one sided yaar yeah. who burned down the house no no it's not one sided you said we are fighting against cookie militants groups are the villages occupied by the cookie militant groups are those villages innocent villages poor villages daily are the villages are the militant groups are we killing them are we destroying their house are we burning their house are they cookie militants i need to borrow a paper okay uh, mr singh you respond now i think uh, how can g <laughs> has made his point <laughs> First Please. of all, uh, I want to. I was just trying to remember that I don't forget. Uh, with due respect to General Saab, General Saab, Zaroor uh, Manipur mein rehein honge. बहुत अच्छी तरह समझते हैं. बिल्कुल सही कह रहे हैं. He is right and he is not right. I'll tell you. Uh, yes, there are a lot of insurgent groups uh, uh, of the Maitais also and of the Kukis also. I agree. But like I said, in this fight, initially the whole shooting down on the 27th happened from the hills with all the sophisticated arms. now i can say probably and or with all possibility that everybody must have got involved but initially it was not that case are you saying sir initially mathis were not there no 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 i am saying initially it was uh, the villagers on the foothills defending uh, those shooting down on the 27th mark my words okay. it not one it was totally well planned now i guess it's gone out of uh, this beyond that so a lot of looting has happened and things like that Uh, so that that is that and and please i tell i am again i am telling mr hawkeep read my lips clearly i condemn all acts of violence and all victims are very very innocent people read my lips i condemn all acts of violence 
that's all i think uh, uh, and i, I forget the, and the, the stereotyping do you feel that stereotyping has happened no that's no the I, see i'll tell you one thing what is the deadline of manipur 1961 करेक्ट उसके बाद जो भी आएगा जैसे मैडम किम ने बोला चाहे आप मैते हो चाहे आप मणिपुरी नागा हो चाहे आप कुकी हो चाहे कोई भी हो यू आर कंसिडर्ड अ फॉरेनर पहले आपको हिंदुस्तानी बनना पड़ेगा तब जाके मणिपुरी बनोगे ना ठीक है तो अगर आप एनआरसी मांग रहे हो तो उसमें गलती क्या है सो द होल आइडिया इज आई डोंट नो इफ दे वर्ड सिंस द फर्स्ट वन ऑफ माई फर्स्ट इंटरव्यू है वो गोल चक्कर ही मारता रहा एंड आई कैम सेंग आई सेट एनी बडी हु कम्स दे डोंट रीड माई लिप्स प्रॉपरली दे हैव ऑलरेडी टेकन अ स्टैंड विदाउट मीन लिस्निंग टू मी दे लाइक ही सेट की मिस्टर निशिका आई से आई कंडेम इट एनी बडी हु कम्स इन टू द स्टेट ऑफ मणिपुर और हु क्रॉसेज ओवर टू दिस साइड आफ्टर नाइनटीन सिक्सटी वन इज एन इन्फिल्ट्रेटर एंड येस द गवर्नमेंट शुड हैव चेक दैट इन्फिल्ट्रेशन आई एग्री एंड because they have come because of the disturbances in myanmar there should be allotted a certain distinct because you can't just push them back to hell or something C- create a space where they can reside there live there but don't give them the right to vote don't give them the right to buy land in our state they cannot be given citizen right so, uh, so like for example up you cannot like i keep saying you cannot go into america just like that you need papers proper visas proper everything correct i mean to so, okay india ka dharmshala hai kya are we less than america we are also nation sovereign country so yes the government should have been very uh, vigilant on that which i agree so that's not my not only not only vigilant vigilant which oh. the government must take a step the government slept for so many years so i agree and today it is the civilians and particularly the cookies who are br- uh, branded as foreigners and one thing okay if anyone a civilian or somebody who is uneducated says something that does not have so much weight but coming from the mouth of the chief minister that coo- cookie burmese uh, poppy planters foreigners refugees dehumanizing the cookies this is something which i if i was a refugee why should i fight for my country why should i fight for my state you are an mp in the parliament how can you be refugee yes so branding me as a refugee because no. when the chief minister i'm not saying mr nishikant no, no, no. or anybody you are mp any victim and hari i'm not saying that coming from the mouth of the chief minister is very much unbecoming of a chief minister and i want to add little bit more these kuki su groups i want to come again because i want to add little bit more points here mr virian singh used them as volunteers during election and today accusing them of being terrorists this is not acceptable let 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 me tell you this is something which is condemnable and a cm should never speak today today you call somebody a murderer and tomorrow you call you can't call that murderer a saint okay so today i think the political setup or the um, the bjp leader or uh, the cm who forms bjp government in the state has to think twice and in fact if i was in his shoes i would have resigned with dignity resigned with dignity uh, there is an added issue to it you know i would like uh, the pcr to play a visual in which uh, birain singh is explaining poppy cultivation you know le- let's go to the let's go to the basic thing mm. yeah, yeah. Uh, poppy kabiran singh ji bata rahe hain is telling people that this is an area where poppy cultivation takes place and i think he is explaining to a party member uh, it's a four month old video but it just tells us that poppy cultivation is an issue so now when we talk about this uh, political action which took place which was succeeded by a sort of a police and military action which was followed by violence in chura chandpur the issue is isn't nishikant ji poppy cultivation a reality in manipur yes. do you feel that the action which the chief minister took right on this issue somehow disturbed the uh, militants there they were involved in it and i am using the militant yes yes, yes. in a neutral word yes. i am not exactly using the word militant in a community context at all i would like to make it clear militants can be anyone 
so that is why i never use the word this militant or from that community militant militant is a militant like a terrorist no religion no caste no creed nishikant ji then i'll go to general mr nishikant ji haan ji about uh, see uh, first of all uh, some villager some people had come and uh, settled in the reserve forest so they were evicted and yes the government should have been more vigilant and shouldn't have ever let them settle only number one number two when it comes to poppy plantation the i believe there are around 5 15000 acres of land where poppies are grown out of which 13000 acres are in that area i am not saying that the uh, uh, sorry to name but i am not saying that one particular community is the one who's doing everything mm. there are other people also yes. but the area grown is that area so when this poppy culti- cultivation was attacked a lot of things happened and uh, and and the sad part is uh, with all due respect to all our uh, tribal brothers that the a thing erupted the so called uh, march that they took out what happened to be on a lai harawa that is a maitai festival nahi hona chahiye tha maybe they were not aware so i mean i'm just telling the sequence of things that happened and everything that erupted so i actually don't want to go there again they'll say i'm communal and this and that so so this is uh, one part the uh, uh, this so this poppy uh, plantation is a reality and people who are involved make a lot of money and then you then i on your screen i saw a thing on cdf so which is another reality these people have been crossing over and now probably a lot of insurgent groups have gotten involved but initially like i said on the 27th it was a one way traffic a lot of people have got involved that also uh <coughs> mr hauke and then i'll go to general uh, meston isn't this a reality that you know poppy cultivation has taken place poppy cultivation has become an issue it is deforestation and poppy cultivation and which is creating a national security problem <coughs> in any case i should say war on drugs is supported by the anti cookies of yes. family including the church leaders the pastors the reverends and also including by the sus operation groups whom today they call it anarcho terrorists if you can imagine all the support we have landed on war against drugs but in the entire state of manipur in a section of the society in section of a mass of land when a poppy is cultivated painting a communal color to all of it is opposed by the kukizu community in the same way because of few hundreds influx from burma nahi nahi painting a color of the kukizu family as entire kukizu uh, illegal immigrants is opposed to it so now i do agree there are poppy cultivation in some pockets of our land i do agree and we fought and we joined war on drugs initiated by the state government we admitted it there are poppy cultivation in pockets of the areas by saying that we don't personally i was involved i was involved very much involved since 2017 giving awareness to the uh the 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 innocent villages not to cultivate poppy because this could affect not just the fate of our our belief but also the environment the ecology that we are living on so this is how we have been managing with this is how we have been trying our people to understand the effect of poppy cultivation and the effect of on environment issues we are also knowing what exactly could be the effect because of this poppy cultivation we know have all those facts and all those problems due to all this but it is a fact mr how can it's a fact 1000 acres painting painting of course it is a fact i don't deny it i don't deny it i don't deny it Chal- but declaring as you can see in the, your screen uh, our honorable chief minister mrs berin singh he openly said that i will declare war on these people who are these people are they not his citizens why should he declare war on this people do 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 don't he has any mechanism to control he already failed in order to cover okay. up his failure you know actually uh, you know we have discussed lot of things on we have discussed lot of things on berin singh i would just like to play out the bite again let's listen to him once you know i uh, you know a lot of uh, heated discussion on berin singh has taken place today just let's listen to him what exactly did he say which has been reported let's listen to him 
It came in the early morning, around 1.30 I got the information and I immediately informed to the, uh, talked to the army personnel also, one Mr. Bijay, Colonel SS, and uh, he assured me that he will look after the matter and uh, immediately he called the fire tender and uh, he doused the fire, he told me. But I am also thinking how the fire has come in such a security zone area and uh, how it was happened. So now I am going to have a review meeting of the security and how it is, uh, how it was happened and uh, how we can prevent it in future. So this type of thing has to be stopped immediately. I appeal to uh, 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 manly the Sukuki militant to stop it, otherwise they will face the consequences. And I also appeal to the uh, peoples or mighty peoples who are with arms not to attack anything, any, anything, please to keep maintain peace and uh, so that we can restore normalcy in the state of Manipur. Uh, very positive. I uh, Zoram Thanga is well experienced uh, and the Senate Mostly Minister in the entire Norris. And uh, I inform him that uh, some of the some of the peoples, uh, some of the Manipuri, Maiti peoples mainly residing there are a little bit facing apprehension be, uh, due to the ongoing uh, crisis in the state of Manipur. So immediately uh, he called me in the morning and he assured me that nothing will be happen. And I also asked him that as a uh, senior uh, and experienced minister, uh, the whatever the uh, happening in the state of Manipur, uh, you can have dialogue with the uh, bottoms so that uh, we can meet again and we can uh, bring the normalcy in the state. And I also request him to give safety those maitis who are living in the state of Mizoram. And he also assured me that that kind of things, nothing will be happen. And all the maitis who are living in the Mizoram will be safe. I also assured him that those river Mizos here in the state of Manipur, they will be protected. You know, very, very sad scenario. Uh, I visited uh, some of the relief camp, and uh, people are suffering. Mainly, always personnel, persons, children, women, they are suffering. And the government is trying to help at the best level. Today I visited some area and the uh, state government is going to construct prefabricated houses to accommodate them temporarily till the permanent settlement is taken place to ship at their previous places. So around 3,000 to 4,000 temporary houses will be constructed. Today also at this place around 32 families are here. We are looking the place where the new construction can be done with the help of the club's member. And uh, we have already ordered the prefabricated materials to this impulse within 10 15 days. And uh, within one and a half months, and a maximum two months, we can provide all the facility so that the, those who are in the relief camp can be seated at the fabricated houses. I don't think so. I don't think so because, you know, we're going to open the schools up to class 8 only. And because education, we cannot we cannot laugh education and help due to this uh, prevailing situation. We have to give priority on education and health. So I think it is my earnest appeal and the request to the, all, the, all the people of the state not to disturb in educational part and the health sector because it is the uh, most needed being a human beings for the present generation and for the future generation.
I appeal to uh, 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 man leader Su Kuki militant to stop it. Otherwise, they will face the consequences. And I also appeal to the uh, peoples or Maitai peoples who are with arms not to attack anything, any, anything. Please do keep maintained peace and uh, so that we can resolve normalcy in the state of Manipur. आज आपने मणिपुर वायलेंस को लेकर मेंशनिंग की थी क्या हुआ उसमें कोर्ट में हम लोग ने मेंशन किया था मैटर एक अर्जेंट आई फाइल करने के बाद कि पिछली दो हियरिंग्स के बाद भी अभी जो पिछले एक दो हफ्तों में हुआ है कि इतनी सारी कोशिशों के बावजूद भी और अश्योरेंसेस के बावजूद भी काफ़ी सारे ट्राइबल लोगों की डेथ हुई है और काफ़ी सारे घर जलाए गए हैं और काफ़ी माहौल वापस से एक ऐसा डर का माहौल हो रहा है तो उस आ, उसके लिए हमने प्रोटेक्शन के लिए और अर्जेंट रिलीफ्स के लिए जिन लोगों को जो विक्टिम्स हैं उनके लिए एप्लीकेशन लगाई थी और उसकी सुनवाई के लिए हमने मेंशनिंग किया था और कोर्ट ने वो वेकेशन के लिए तो वो जो हमारी रिक्वेस्ट थी उसको खारिज कर दिया है लेकिन जो मेन मैटर जो सत्रह जुलाई को सुनने वाला था उसको कोर्ट ने तीन जुलाई के लिए प्रीपोन कर दिया ओके मैडम गांगते war on drugs everyone supported and i was one who supported it even before war on drugs was the um announced by the chief minister i came to delhi knowing that there are poppy uh, plantation in some of the hill districts i came to delhi met some uh company people on plantation of stevia okay. in place of um poppy plantation okay. because i heard in okrul district before <coughs> excuse me before the, the coo some cookies planted this poppy plantation was done in okrul district few years ago so but then they were convinced that horticulture plantation would be better than this poppy plantation knowing all the destructive effects of this poppy pl uh, plantation so then uh, the a village called pay village in ukrul district shifted from planting poppy to horticulture they were so successful that the government of manipur gave them an award of 10 lakhs mm -hmm. so this is a success story in okrul district so it was not really i do not know why the chief minister said this cookie poppy planters when it was planted in okrul district it was never said that uh tangkul poppy planters but the government did its best to help and then they shifted from planting poppy poppies to horticulture you know, which was very good you know uh, one thing mm. i rajesh you know i want to ask you you know there has to be something which biren singh must be enjoying you know uh, in all the conversations you know every time biren singh becomes the villain but he must be having something which makes him stay put within the scheme of things for bharti janata party i mean i mean so most of the conversation he is the center of uh, attention but he seems to stay put there mm. <coughs> well he has to be part of it because you know he is the chief minister of the state and he is someone who know who has a uh, had a fairly really peaceful stint uh, before uh, this uh, violence which broke out and uh, uh, you know uh, the fact is that uh, this this uh, war between ethnicity and you know he belongs to an ethnic composition which is uh, which is majority uh, in the state of manipur so the bjp would not want to be seen see there are two things hey if you remove biren singh right now you know because there are many people who believe that uh, uh, that you know if his continuance if both sides have no faith in him his continuance remains to be one of the uh, key impending blocks where why peace has not uh, been completely restored in the state of manipur uh, but if you look at the political like i don't know for how long this is going to last but the fact is that uh if, if if you are a political party with an absolute majority and you change the chief minister uh, based on demand of x or y or z uh then you are seen as politically weak and i think that is one of, uh, and and also the fact that you know he belongs to the dominant white community uh, so these are the two uh, 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 you know lifelines which i think virin singh is enjoying right now 
uh, but I seriously doubt uh, that you know if this if this violence persists, uh, how long this uh, uh, this will last uh, is 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 the million dollar question because you know the government uh, the central government will also have to factor in uh, that you know there are two two issues on which you know the movement has been very very consistent right from the world. when I say right from the word go Kartike, it is from the 14th or 30th of May uh, 2014 onwards. You know, one is act peace policy when Prime Minister made it mandatory for every single minister to visit one of the state of North East uh, in, in every 15 days. And the other was, uh, you know, the Dalit outreach program. And in, in nine years, you know, they, they, they have not faced the kind of uh, problem or the kind of credibility crisis which they are facing right now. The violence in Manipur is, is, is literally stopping doing uh, their very carefully, very hard. I mean, you know, there, there was a lot of hard work also put on in their, their act is policy. And all of that uh, looks like, you know, will go down the drain if the situation doesn't, uh, is, is not contained by early. So, I mean, the, the question is uh, not when is going to uh, is going to be removed, but for how long uh, will the center, uh, you know, uh, allow the situation to go as it is going right now? Because politically, the government has to take a decision. Uh, see, uh, I mean, you know, Home Minister Amit Shah is the number two in the government, number two in the party, uh, to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And Kartike, he made a visit, he stayed here in the state of Manipur for three and a half days. And he also made several announcements. Then, you know, the center announced the peace committee. All of those came a cropper, you know, I mean, the peace committee was a non-starter. And honestly speaking, very, very embarrassing. Uh, the way you know every almost every uh, uh, person who was named a group was named in that committee simply uh, uh, refused to acknowledge the presence said that they were okay. not consulted so i think you know uh, the government really needs to uh, work hard to send a, a message that you know a is, is honestly looking for a political uh, situation solution to the uh, crisis which is unfolding but if this continues for long karthike I, 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 you know, I, I think the government will have to, the central government will have to take a very hard call on, uh, on, on, on the future of the chief. Uh, General Minister, do you think that a reimagination of the security grid is required after 40 days? A lot of uh, changes are required, not only security grid. After all, I have mentioned always that uh, the solution lies, it's a political solution. It's a political problem and yes. therefore the solution is political as well. Hmm. Security apparatus is one of the instruments to assist. It is not uh, the ultimate. Uh, the ultimate solution is the political. Now, I would also like to state one thing, uh, Karthikeyan. I think I have been very candid in my all remarks that firstly, militant groups are from all the so-called ethnicities. Number two, I think one gentleman stated that I need to correct the general General has not made any remark that who was the perpetrator of this violence, which strife started, which ethnicity, I have not stated. I think he can revisit uh, everything because false accusations uh, is highly incorrect and I don't uh, relish it by anyone. He could be anyone. Because when I have not stated, how can he accuse me of this uh, false statement? Mm -hmm. Number three, I am glad he's agreed that yes, there are militant organizations from each ethnicity. Number four, I've been always stating that it is some vested interest. I think there is the language is very clear who have perpetrated this crime and vested interest can be anyone. I have not defined any community. And number four is drugs. We are talking about drugs. Let me be very clear. 1980s, I was there. Drug trafficking was there. Not only in Manipur, the entire Northeast state. Let us go back into history. Poppy cultivation and all has been uh, uh, there during the British time. So. Yes, drugs should not be there. But is it only one particular uh, group of people doing? No. Drugs proliferate when there is political patronage by some people. And I, that's why I'm making a very clear cut remark. It's been going on since 1970s, 80s. Please read the history. So, anyone who was in power, some of the vested interests again ensure uh, that, uh, you know, the drug trafficking was on in the entire Northeast, all states. From Manipur within the within the states, why was it on? So, if someone wants to, uh, to uh, eradicate it, yes, it can be. It is then everything. It has to be a holistic approach. All people who are connected in drug trafficking, there could be anyone, politicians, police, anyone. After all, uh, if it is transiting right up to Assam and uh, Arunachal, it's going through some of these states. So, how is it going? It is not uh, moving automatic. So, everyone needs to be held accountable. And yes. 
drug trafficking is a nuisance uh, for any country, including uh, what we have I've been seeing in Punjab. It should be banned and uh, let it be enforced totally. Let us not blame anyone. After all, my first question is, since 70s, 80s, it has been there. How was drug trafficking taking place then? People are involved. It's a uh, people from all all walks of life. I would say they are involved. Otherwise, nothing can happen. So till that time, any kind of patronage is not there. Nothing is possible. So let us be very very clear. Let us tackle this issue very very holistically. And last but not the least, I think some gentleman was stating, uh, you know, let uh, first peace uh, prevail and then we can have peace marches. No, everything is possible. I think he was some uh, social activist. I forget his name. I am of the view. Why not today? All MLAs, they get people from all uh, this thing. This will be the first big step. I am giving the uh, and throughout. I think I've been only giving constructive suggestions. I am not indulging in any kind of blame game because we uh, can't be crying over uh, spilt milk. So let us look at the future. Solution lies. Get all walks of people walking in the streets. It is possible. Why? Why someone is so apprehensive? No, they can't walk. Send me. I will do it. I have been uh, uh, and I give a lot of examples. I was in uh, Rwanda. I have told you I was in Mozambique. I have seen how uh, people have been demobilized, uh, uh, disarmed, and uh, brought into natural reintegration. Rwanda, what kind of uh, 1.5 million people were killed there? As a young major, I was there. So today, the, look at the model of that country. How is it uh, today? The word Hutus and Tutsis is not even being talked about in Rwanda. Why, uh, why are we talking the, uh, these two ethnicity words? Remove them. Call everyone a Indian. Call everyone a Manipuri. These are the hard solutions we have to take. Otherwise, it is just easy to... Everyone is just saying, he, play, he did this, he did that. So let us not focus on what an, anyone has done. Yes, mistakes have happened. Uh, uh, lives have been lost. Manipuri lives have been lost. So look at a country where 1.5 uh, million people genocide was there. So they have uh, got it resolved. I, I think that's a. I think that's a fair point. That if Hutsis and if 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 I'm getting the ethnicity, uh, uh, Tutsis and Hutus, Tutsis and Hutus Hutu. can live together. Why can't the issue be resolved in Manipur? Why not? Why not? Why not? But first, guns have to stop. Peace has to be brought. But yeah. the guns are not coming back. Well, it has to be. Why, why? But I mean to say, how can you have an armed civil society and then the no, peace? You can't have uh, civilians armed. You have, they have to disarm them. You can't have anybody armed in Manipur, whether they're civilian or whether there are uh, insurgent groups. They have to be disarmed. The thing is, right under the, the nose of the chief minister, when arms could be exchanged with the, somebody's other card, okay. that is the problem. So the chief minister has to answer. We want a state where there is peace like before. For this, guns have to stop. In order guns to stop, the chief minister must own responsibility. Where are these guns? Thousands of weapons gone. And just a few minutes back, you have just told us that these many weapons have been seized from Lilong in Thobal district. So more has to come. More has to be revealed uh, from the valley, from the hill, from the sides, from the lanes, uh, from everywhere. Only then I think we can have a kind of relief. Otherwise, what we demand is really president's rule. I do not know why the central government is so adamant, so arrogant that they want all of us to kill one another. They don't want the, the country to, to be broken. But I think what they want is just the land, not the people. Let the people kill the uh, I don't think so. Or Any government would be desirous if of that. that is the case. If that is no, the that case. that is not the case. If that is the case. My, my point is, if that is the case, let there be president's rule. This is demanded not only by Kim Gang Te. It is demanded by all the peace-loving people from the valley and from the hills. Mm -hmm. Only then, these guns can come to a stop. Firing can come to a stop. Uh, let me tell you, I talk to, please don't ask me with whom I talk. 
I talked to one army officer. I said, please, I belong to Manipur. For me, there is no hill or valley. For me, I belong to this state. Please help our people, the civilians. What he said, you know, he said, you, are you talking can, about, see, I, what I, can I, we, madam. what, uh, no, no, just, just once again, what can I say? Our hands are tied. Otherwise, so if president's rule is imposed, then there can be law and order. People can sigh uh, a sigh of relief. Okay. Uh, Brijesh, Brijesh, you wanted to come yeah, in? See, yeah, I just wanted to make one more point. You know, the violence which is escalating, the violence which is happening is sporadic incidents and all, and you know, uh, uh, people are not, uh, the state is not able to control. Uh, there's also one on a very important factor other than uh, the fact that, you know, that uh, uh, the armies have been looted or uh, as Indian Express had reported, the uh, weapons were literally handed over. It's a lack of distrust on two, two, two organizations. You know, when you talk to Maitis, you know, a very, of the several Maiti intellectuals have written articles about how they do not trust the Assam rifles. And you know how they're taking sides of cookies and how they're uh, they're acting in partisan manner. The same Correct. is, you know, when you talk to the cookies, the kind of distrust they have with the state police and the commandos. You know, they, the commandos and and how they are the one who are who are actually aiding and abetting. I mean, I'm just uh, using the sentence which is made by uh, from both sides and, uh, and reports which have come in esteemed dailies like uh, you know uh, Indian Express and Times of India. So the point is that you know I, 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 and, and nobody talks of the thousands of weapons you know which is uh, which is out in station as far as uh, the local uh, people is concerned. So I uh, honestly don't understand you know until there's a comprehensive plan where you get a set of people you know whom both sides trust. But if you operate in a scenario which is already very complex, riddled with uh, you know ethnic divides, very very deep. Irrespective of how you know uh, Mr. Singh or uh, Madam Gante or somebody says that you know oh we all Manipuri. Uh, I mean I, I didn't get a hint of it in the last 40 plus days as we have been discussing it uh, from May 3 onwards. So uh, the, I think the, one of the big challenge for the for the state also is Kartike to get a security apparatus which is uh, uh, you know like the Indian Army which is like you know which is trusted by both sides. You cannot have a situation where you know a bombing operation is either being carried by Assam rifles which is completely denounced by the majority Maitis. And then you have, uh, you know, state police and commandos, which is uh, completely, uh, to, which is treated with great degree of suspicion and distrust by the by the cookies. I think this is one anomaly which not many are talking about, but which is very very crucial when it comes to enforcing the writ of the law. How how else are you going to implement uh, the law of the land on there? How do you act or take a decisive step? You know, arrest somebody whether he's a cookie or maiti if people don't believe in that particular uh, police force or, or or say for example a samurai. I think that is one big challenge. Mr. Hauke, do you agree with Brijesh? Mr. Hauke, do you yes, agree to with an extent, Brijesh? I agree with that. Mr. Yes. is so debrated. And before that, let me uh, make a three quick points, if you permit me. One, narco terrorists and drugs issues are the narrative set up by the government to cover up their misgovernments. That is number one. Number two, Mr. Chief Minister, he still deny about the value-based terrorists like Arambai Tengol and Meitei Lipun, in whose hands those state arms and ammunition are still in contact with the this, uh, Arambai Tengol and uh, Meitei Lipun. Second thing, third thing, if at all, if at all we want peace and normalcy to return back, and if at all we are really wanting for a peace to settle down. What exactly? Let's go back 15 days. What exactly is happening in 15 days? What exactly is happening in 15 days? And what exactly are both the communities are committing within these 15 days? We can, the picture can be clear enough. Within these 15 days, what exactly is happening on both sides? Who attacks who? Who defends from whom? The chief, the chief minister must answer. The home minister must answer. And the silence of the Honorable Prime Minister Mr. Modi is aggravated with the situation. And fourthly, and fourthly, the Manipur media houses, they are aggravating the situations, reporting fact, misrepresenting the fact. So painting all these facts and propagandas by the media house in the state of Manipur, this media house has to 
be in such a way that they should not report fact and manipulate news. They are aggravating on both sides. The media house should stand with justice and fact. Mr. Singh, I think you need to come in here and say. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I think he has made his point. You need to come in. Yeah, yeah. थोड़ा ज़्यादा बोल दिया कि media houses. You see, uh, as he says whatever, but uh, the report I get today is that. Uh, You're reading that report? No, no. This is my message sent by my reporters. Okay. So, some Lia uh, Lai Makong, uh, five houses were torched, four belonging to Maithais and one belonging to a Naga, Manipuri Naga. Okay. Torched by who? Okay. Okay. So, so it's not key one this side. This is from your newspaper, if I may say that. Uh, it's uh, every newspaper. Every newspaper. And it happened in Lai Makong, right <laughs> next to the army headquarters. General will know where it is. Okay. Then. In uh, in uh, in one area, so I'm just uh, so there is no conflict of interest. I'm just saying this. But it's uh, not one-sided. It's That's not one-sided. I'm not uh, disagreeing with him, but he can't say that we are holy cows and you know, as a niye. And uh, so and you are reading the top headlines of uh, no, newspapers no, no, there. No, no, you know, he just messages me. Uh, so okay. So uh, so so there was some firing happened uh, where this uh, honourable Nalini MLA her area. It's called Irangbam area, I guess. So, वहाँ पर they have been firing there. Right now? Uh, last night or something. Last night yeah. firing. Last evening, last night. Yeah. ये होते रहता है यार. But you know, if you can just put your mobile. I just want to know why this firing, why this violence is taking place. If I they stop firing, things will be fine. We, you know, it's the scare is in the night. कि कब शुरू होगा? I went to a place called Phaiyeng. Okay. And uh, and the, the women came out. They were literally crying. स्नाइपर्स का ना रेंज इज वे बियॉन्ड दैट फाइंग इज अ प्लेस एट द फुट हिल एंड देर आर सम विलेजेस ऑफ द अदर कम्युनिटी एंड दे जस्ट हैव अ नाइस शॉट यू नो एनी टाइम एनी वेन एवर दे वॉन्ट सो सो इट्स नॉट द वे ही इज डिस्क्राइबिंग इट यू हैव टू सी थिंग फ्रॉम बोथ साइड्स तो वो रात को शुरू होता है फिर उसके बाद देन द रिएक्शन हैपन्स इन इम्फॉल ओके एंड दिस हैज बिन गोइंग ऑन बट येस इन द लास्ट फ्यू डेज ही सडनली वट हैपन इन अ चर्च Nine people were killed. Mm -hmm. Nine Maithais were killed. Mm -hmm. Where was that village? It yes, was in Kamenlok. Kamenlok is in Kamen Kamen Kuki village. So if the Valley people go no, there no. and die, please, who please, is attacking no, 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 who? No, 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 no. Please. Let us be very clear. Without I will. I, no, I will tell you. Kamenlok. Let us be fair. Kamenlok is a place. I am going to be fair. Kamenlok is a place where both Maithais and the area. In that particular was a Kuki village, where they had abandoned. So these boys were there. And they were uh, stationed there for the night. Suddenly, they were attacked. No, the night. No, Are they? No, no, no. So what happened? The the let, ghost let came and attacked them. I'll, I'll tell you. No, no. Let I'll me finish. You. Let me finish. Uh, uh, no, no. Wait, wait, madam. When you speak, you take an hour. Let me. I speak very short. So it happened there. So that disturbance again. That really disturbed in fall a lot. After that, suddenly it's been cool. Suddenly you have uh, four, five houses torched uh, right next to Lemakong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you have. uh in mum area mm. uh, some shooting happens mm. so i think if when this thing completely stops everything will die out here yeah? okay gorkha regiment i heard was mm. stationed there mm. and mm. people came by vehicles six vehicles mm. and there were uh, they did the Gor the gorkha regiment did mm. not allow them to enter okay. the kuki village okay then there was a shooting mm. and gorkha one gorkha regiment one personnel died From the city. Hmm. In the Kuki then, villages, there were people with AKs also. Uh, and then, what happened? What, what did you say? In the Kuki villages, uh, she calls. There were people with AK forces. There was heavy firing from both sides. Heavy well, firing. Well, that that. Yeah. So no, well, don't miss out that hey, area hey, also. Hey, okay, okay. Uh, don't hate me, madam. What? I'm calling you, madam. What? Watch your. Uh, don't hate me. What? No, don't, I'm not hating you. Yeah, yeah. I'm just answering. I've been calling you, madam. It's only. It's only. I'm not uh, no, no. mentioning your name. That's all. Because we all are panelists. Same. No, no. But so I will call anyway, you, madam. Don't hate me. I will. I will also call you, sir. It's no matter. Okay. In fact, I call you. No, no. Don't do that. Kabi bhi hate mat karo. Alright. Right. One, one second. What did you say? Tamo. Tamo means respect. Okay. okay. Respect for anyone. Even younger person. Tamo means dada. 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 I don't want to be dada. 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 You know also yeah, that I know Manipuri very well. Me tell you. Now she knows Don't teach me. Okay. <laughs> Don't teach me. So, what I heard, I'm just telling. 
So you, then you what sitting happened? Sitting here in what, Delhi, what you happened? heard that? No, no. I was there before I came. Then Come what happened? You are not there in Manipur. You're disturbing me. Come along, you're not there. in Manipur. Wait, 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 wait. Listen. Mm. Then what happened? When one Gorkha regiment died, then the Gorkha regiment also, I think, was very upset. So then what happened? The, go, instead of, in place of Gorkha regiment, a some rifle was sent. Then more vehicles came, and then this whole village, Aigizang, Kamenlo, and um, what's that, the other one, I forgot. Anyway, these were burned down, but the church was not burned down. So then there was, was a fight. No, there she's, was a she's fight. She's incomplete. She's skipping yeah. a lot. If there were Okay, okay. Wait, well, wait, the, wait, the, wait. the, the so anchor is asking happened? me, not you. Let me answer. You're not the anchor. So wait. what happened? You, please, wait, madam, wait, madam, wait. madam, please. I have not you are skipping. completed you are skipping yet. Mm -hmm. You wait for me. So anchor what happened? Pucha? There was a fight from these uh, defend, uh, uh, defenders mm -hmm. and people who came from the valley. Mm -hmm. So there was a fight. Mm -hmm. And so I, this is what I heard. Okay. So there was there First was of all, a fight. I am an MLA and, and a so newspaper also. So yes. Let me so be more precise. Okay. So Why was that area attacked? Because instant, uh, incessant, sporadic uh, uh, attacks were being held, uh, being done. Achha. So some people went. Of course, now the valley people got themselves armed ha. and they went to attack. Ha. So if those Cookie brothers were unarmed, you you would have it wouldn't have lasted. It lasted for two three days. Two three days. I yeah. Know. Yes. Okay. How will you last without guns? Yeah. Come on, man. I wonder. Uh, Ray, yeah. Don't they, wonder, now. Let's wait, talk logic. I wonder how they died in the church. No, I'm this telling you. What? I'm telling you how they died. I'll tell you. In I'll the tell. cookie village. I will tell you. So what happened? So I don't want to drag no, into. No. I don't Come want on, to man. drag into. She is talking with like a ghost here. Yeah? No, I'm not. Madam, I'm there. No, no, madam. I'm going to walk. I'm going to walk out. She's the anchor. No, no, no. He's the anchor, not you, madam. Madam, first of all, no, no. No, You are saying you're talking ghost. We have any proof? No, no, no. Like you said, I spoke to somebody. I can't name him. Madam, madam, Gante, I am not going to. I am not going to say that you don't speak. I am just, as you said, so many people died in church. I will tell you, na. I said how and why because you went to a different point. I'm just asking. Yes. What happened that day? You made a very strong statement. I'm telling you, na. Apko. You said people died in church in a religious place. How? Yes. Ha. So I want to know. There should be no nitpicking. Number one of facts. Okay. So I said those firing happened for a couple of days. I mean, if one side was unarmed, do you think it will last for a couple of days? No, no chance. Anyway, so that village was abandoned, and some maithais were there. They were. They had stayed the night there. And when they were speaking on the walkie-talkie, walkie-talkie, okay, you can catch signals. So the other side caught on. They bombarded them with bombs. They died. All nine of them died. So naturally, there was a reaction. So to say that, oh, we are holy cow, nothing. And please don't do that. Nobody should do uh, that. So, Phil? Nobody should so do let's that. speak facts. Na. Yeah. I'm agreeing. Okay. Na. Mm -hmm. He is both yes. sides. But don't say that it's one-sided. See, I also agree. I I agree He's that two parties. Both sides yeah, are yeah. Yeah. Both yeah. parties, I say. You are two speaking parties. as if one side is unarmed. Nee, nee, nee. If somebody one I'm side is unarmed, a, a combat I'm cannot last for a couple of days. I'm never... Okay, I'm, I always stand in the middle. Wh what I said was two parties. You didn't hear me. No, you said, said as if I one said. side was not armed. No, no, no. I never said that. I never said that. Uh, Defenders, uh, I said. Defenders. Defenders. Huh. So Who? both of them had weapons? Of course. Yes. Heavily armed. Heavily That's armed. why they kill one another. Heavy like This is what I said. No, no, no. But that Heavy or not, no, I no, don't no. know. But Those two parties I don't know. See, armed. May I speak Achha, to the anchor? Yeah. May I speak to the it. anchor? Okay. May I speak to the anchor? Pehle aap phir madam nee, nee. So what happened was that area, the cookies vacated. In that vacated village, some Maitai chaps went there and they had been staying, they were going to stay the night there and on the walkie-talkie, they disclosed their location, Achha. which they caught on. So they shelled bombs. So unarmed people have put a stone and put a stone and put a stone and put a stone and put a stone. No. It's a good idea. Logic, think, sir. So, so then, you mean? Aray, please don't interrupt, dear. Um, let me speak to the anchor. Madam, for heaven's sake, don't interrupt. You have no time. Nahin, please complete. Ha. So, so naturally, the reaction comes to Imphal. Imphal gets extremely disturbed. Okay. What hmm. I'm trying to say is, if these firings, from those unarmed people, so called, stop from the hills. Now, eventually, things will die down here. Yeah? Simple. Okay. So, the point yeah. is that firing from the hills are taking place on the people who are living on foothills. Foothills. And then you have I a went reaction. There. Kartika, I went there. And they were, and I was very angry with the state government also. And these people said, Ki, when night falls, I don't know. They said, we don't want your rice. We don't want anything. Send some people. 
and they are sleeping like you know khula in the khula maidan they can see them and where we went and the gun can easily easily i mean the sniper has a range of few kilometers they are just 1 kilometer down okay imagine what kind of threat these people are living every night every night that's a sweet spot 1 kilometer is yeah, no range yeah nothing yaar yeah. wait to my that's what i'm trying to say you see both sides na ab now you, you people are staying here and you keep hearing one side listen to both sides i am listening to both sides i have friends from both sides there are so many uh, people who are married cross you know between the two communities there are offsprings i mean you have to understand you have you want to understand please try to put yourself on the other person's shoe and understand i understand a lot of people have been homeless from both communities correct okay and i i said like i, I don't know why uh, uh, my cookie brothers always keep saying i'm i am not communal i'm just bring, uh, coming out with the facts okay it's so okay. he has he has made one point now you okay, you have the mic ab aap boliye what i'm trying to say is why did us valley brothers and brothers went to these cookie village in the hill Why? Why? Which Why villages? Did? Are you He's saying that? Come and look. Uh, I guess Ang and uh, three villages. Mm -hmm. Why did they go there? Are you saying that the violence started because of that? Not that. I didn't say Then? that. But why did they go there when there's so much problem and violence and death? Why? If they if they were not armed, why did they go there and stay in the church? This is what I'm saying. Okay, Mr. Howkep, any comment from you? somebody somewhere keep on talking and mentioning about the the sniper 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 how about those i didn't talk about sniper 4, right now 4000 there was no sniper there was a bomb i'm talking about no yeah i'm coming to you ha i'm coming to you sir please i'm hmm. coming to you how about uh, uh, why don't we forget to talk about uh, justified about taking volume uncha karna yaar king of 2005 from peer armory and second thing in a simple way If you don't attack the cookie village, there won't be any retaliation. We are human. We have to defend ourselves. We have to defend our village. We have to defend our land. We have to defend our children and women. Please. You, you know, only, only you, you, so in fifteen days. I so say, I said this again. In fifteen days. In fifteen days. In fifteen days. In fifteen days, the Home Minister appeal for calm and to maintain peace, restraints from violence. What exactly is happening in in fifty? I I you know take you know I think I I I, th I think the only point I think there's a bit of a there was a bit of a audio drop you know I think the big issue is that there uh, Mr. Singh some sort of a conversation needs to take place at multiple levels absolutely and at multiple places you know if a conversation can take place without public uh, what you call uh, public pressure in Hyderabad mm -hmm. or I'm sorry. I'm giving you a very long, off, vague thing. It's like uh, the negotiation of Oslo Accords took place in Scandinavia. In the sense, they couldn't have taken place in Beirut or Jerusalem. My point is very simple: is some conversation needs to take place on one table. Uh, Can I? Yes, yes, I yes, yes. I have never heard of any cookie brother feel sad for the loss of the Maitais and speak like you know, like Manipuri. It's always one-sided. I am sitting here and I condemn every violence that happened. Okay. Correct, correct. I'm, I have said this before also correct, on the channel. Correct, 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 correct. I am hardly. I mean, I have seen so many debates. It's always one-sided, and 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 like uh, you're saying, stop. You know, it's from the hill, foothill that beginning it starts. Now, what's happened is too, because of the arms being stolen and too many uh, valley people are also armed. Initially, it was one way. It should have started. Simple as that. And the poppy. Uh, what what is happening to the poppy cultivation drive? Has Full it stopped? Full on. I mean, uh, the, the gentleman before was saying that oh, we are against <laughs> it, but आपके आंगन में grow हो रहा भाई. You are against it. क्यों हो grow होने दे रहे हो? It is your area, ना? Right? Where the growth is, whoever may be involved. Why let it happen? I mean, I am not saying there is one community that is involved. There could be many players in that. But why are you uh, letting allowing that poppy uh, cultivation in your area? Madam Gante. Yes. As I already explained, it was not only in this area. I condemn. Thirteen thousand acres. I think we. Thirty thousand. One three out of fifteen thousand. Anyway. Okay. Now you speak. No one is disturbing you. Ab bolie. Okay. So this poppy plantation, I don't justify. I have not even seen the plants because I have not been to that area. But as I already mentioned, that. poppy plantation started in some other districts 
at that time the CM never called it, uh, called the name of that community, you know, branding these planters. These little things also matter so much. And today, as I said, I tried my level best in 2017-18 to bring plantation of stevia in Manipur so that these farmers in the hill areas could switch you know, on to stevia because this could be harvested four times a year. But the government did not listen to the social workers or activists and many times CSOs. This is one thing we tried also our level best to help our state. And another thing is, these poppy planters, we know how destructive it is. The pastors, I know, they tried their level best. They even condemned that the tithes from these planters should never be accepted in the church because that is not white money. To this extent, the pastors and the evangelists spoke against this poppy plantation. Uh, as I analyze today, this is not only poppy plantation. This is not only drug business, the drug tycoons bringing in just very recently before this problem started. I also read in you the know, paper, in the paper that policemen were involved in you know, bringing I, I, in. I think, you so know, everyone is... Madam Kante, yeah. everyone is, uh, you know, everyone can be involved in poppy cultivation. Hmm. Uh, poppy cultivation cannot be limited to a person or a community. Yes. But I think the uh, I think the conclusion is poppy cultivation is a problem. It's a problem. It's, it's, a, a problem. it's a national security issue because imagine if poppy cultivation uh, gets fused with insurgence, insurgency, you have th then you create people like Taliban. That is why exactly. people like Taliban are so able to even fight and win war against America Absolutely. because their terrorism is wedded to an economy which is all over the place. So you sell yeah. poppy, you yeah. earn six billion dollars. Imagine Pablo Escobar takes on the might of the Colombian Colombian military. government. So uh, I think the bottom line here is that. Yes, there cannot be any stereotyping of the community. There cannot be stereotyping of a community in context of uh, uh, why poppy cultivation is happening. But the poppy cultivation happens there, happens there and it needs to be combated. Yes. It needs to exactly. be taken care of because India yes. cannot afford to have yes. another golden triangle problem yes. which it faces in Punjab, the yes. Chitta thing. Films have been made in our Northeast which is far more complex far more culturally diverse, far more religiously diverse, mm. and in great proximity to India's new threat, and which, is, is funding? which is China yes. and a dictatorial Myanmar. So this is all in this edition yeah. of Sorry. News 9 Livestream. Thank you all of you. Thank you. It is obvious to everybody that there is, it is an agenda-driven thing. Now, obviously, that is garbage. Why should we be judged by benchmarks and yardsticks that have been established by the West? In fact, I'll turn this around and ask the question that, you know, given the state of gun killing and gun violence in the US, uh, what is its risk level? Democracy index, freedom index, religious freedom index, press freedom index. These are all ways of playing mind games. If the findings of several foreign NGOs are to be believed, India ranks poorly on indices like democracy, freedom of press, and religious freedom. So, is it a case of cherry picking of facts to and to be used as a weapon to show India in bad light? You see, what is happening is that essentially a certain kind of narrative is being systematically pumped through. 